Hello. All right, so I am back from Germany. I am now in America. And that means we can do harder questions now because the past three or four videos were actually pre-recorded and I'm sorry for that, they were kind of easy. But now we're gonna do harder questions. If you've not seen the website, go check the website out. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. My goal is to make this one of the largest resources for software engineering interviews. Hence the fact that I've been doing a video every day and I'm getting tired. So anyway, today, let's get into the question right now. All right, so today our question is clone a graph. So what we are given is we're given an undirected graph. An undirected graph is where our adjacent edges, our edges, don't have a certain direction to them. I can go from A to B or B to A. There's no direction. I'm given A. They give me A. What I need to do, do you see this graph? I need to make a copy of the graph and I need to return the copied graph entry points, which is A, A, A. That's all we need to do for this question. So if there was a disjoint section, like, if there was a disjoint section over here in our original graph, it does not matter because where we start, this is the only, this is the graph that we can reach from that start point A. So what we're gonna output, this is what it's gonna look like. This J, W section, it's not, gonna, it's not gonna be in our output because we only care about the graph portion reachable from the start node given to us. Before I even start, I wanna say the code is in the description, fully commented. I think a great way to learn this is read the code first, then watch the description, or the other way around, I'm not sure which is better for you. Depends on how you learn. But how we're gonna do this is, I'm going to walk you through step by step, as always, if you've never seen this question. How do we work from our fundamentals? How do we work from what we know to solve a question like this? So let's look at what kind of tools we have to solve this right now. This is what we need to clone, but we're stuck. What do we know? We need to start from what we know, and we need to work our way towards a solution. So if we're given a graph and a start node, what I know, I, I know I need to do this, I need to search this graph. To clone a graph, I need to search it. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to understand our fundamentals. What we can do is we can do breadth first or depth first search. So which makes more sense when we're trying to clone this graph? Well, depth first search is going to go deep into a certain search path and then it's going to backtrack, go deep into a certain search path. And then breadth first search is going to go level by level, this level, this level, the outer level. It's going to go out level by level, which makes more sense when we're trying to clone it. So when I'm trying to clone this graph, what I'm interested in is these edges and the nodes. I'm interested in for every node I want to clone it, for every edge and relationship I want to clone it. So it makes more sense to use breadth for search when we're doing this because we care about node relationships. Node relationships. Node relationships. We care about expressing everything level by level so that we can draw an accurate representation of this graph. So breadth first search seems more natural, so we'll do that. So what do we need for breadth first search? We need to use a queue. Okay, so now we know something. We know we need to use breadth first search. Why don't we try cloning this using breadth first search? So let's just start this and see where it takes us. All right, so breadth first search it is. We have our queue. Remember that our queue is going to be FIFO in nature. The first item to come in is going to be the first item to come out. So what we're gonna do is we'll add A to the queue. And then what we do is we pull the first item from the queue, which is A, and we'll give it its clone. And then we'll add A's neighbors to the queue for processing next. So B and C will get in the queue. So now B and C are in the queue, they're up next. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to process B. Let's process B, let's give B its clone. So now B has its clone, but wait, there's a problem. How am I going to say B is an edge coming from A? How am I going to access and add this relationship? Am I going to just access the clone and then do another search to find B? How am I going to draw this relationship? Anyway, let's continue. We'll, we'll see how we resolve this. And then let's just add B's uh, children to the queue. Just, just forget the problems we're facing right now. So E hops into the queue. So now we need to process the next node. The next node in our breath for search is C. Let's do it. All right, so now we process C, we gave it its mirroring, let's add its child, D, that has not been seen. But wait, did you just hear what I said? Did you hear the word seen? Do you, do you see how we would need to use some sort of structure to remember what we've already seen so that we don't traverse or research 
things we've already searched. So, okay, the first thing I think of for that is a hash set, a hash table of sorts. If we use a hash table, okay, that's going to remember what nodes we've searched, but how are we going to fill out these edges? How are we going to fill out these relationships? Are we going to just hop straight into the A clone? Are we going to jump to the clone of A? And then are we going to search this whole graph and populate these relationships one by one? How are we even going to do that? So do you see the problems that are starting to arise? This is where we realize we need something to map. We need to map A to the clone of A. We need to map B to the clone of B. We need something to map C to the clone of C. How are we going to execute this mapping? Whenever I think of a map, whenever I think of something where I can get constant time access to a certain mapping, something immediately comes to my mind, and that is a hash table. I think of a hash table immediately. Our new approach, we faced a lot of problems with this approach. We faced a lot of problems, and what we've come to realize now is it would help a lot if we had a mapping. And this is the next intellectual leap, using a hash table. Using a hash table to map from a node to its mirror, and therefore, during the search, constant time access to what has already been mirrored, and constant time access to a mirrored node so that we can draw our edges. We have solved the problems we have faced, we saw the problems we faced, and now we're going to use a hash table to execute this cloning and produce this mapping. And again, I definitely encourage checking the code out. That is going to help you a lot with intellectually understanding this. But now let's use our hash table to perform this cloning so that we can see how it's done. So let's do that right now. All right, so now we're going to walk through our final algorithm. It's going to be very straightforward and I will do it step by step just how the code will do it. What we're going to do is we're going to take our start. We're going to give it a hash table entry. Say A, map to your clone A. And now what we do is we're going to add A to the queue. We just gave it an entry in the hash table and now every item in the queue, the whole point of the queue is we want to populate the edge relationships, the edge relationships at each node we visit during our search. So let me add A. So now we begin our breadth first search. Now we begin exploring the graph and populating relationships. So I eject A from the queue. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the edges. We're gonna investigate them. So now we see B. Does B have a clone? We can see B does not have a clone. Give B a clone. And now we need to add B to our queue, this original B, add it to our queue so that we can process the edges coming off of it. So let's do that. And then what we need to do is draw the edge relationship. So we know that we're holding this node reference here. We can jump to the mirror and we can say, I want an edge relationship from the mirror node, the clone node A to B. So we draw that relationship. What is letting me jump from this node to the mirror node is our hash table. This maps to this. I can draw a mapping from this to this now because I have reference to it. So now what we do is we look at A's other neighbor. We look at C. Does C have a clone? No, it does not. And now we add C to the queue. And this is going to be the original. Every time we add something to the queue, it's going to be the original node, a reference to the original node. And now we draw an edge from A to C because right now we're working on A. We are finished populating the relationships, the edge relationships for A. Do you see how we've cloned them? And now what we need to do is populate the edge relationships for B, populate the edge relationships for C, you see, B and C are in our queue. This is the algorithm, this is how we do it. We had just taken B out, we just took B out, and now, what are the edge relationships? So, does E have an entry? No, it does not, add it. Because we never had an entry for E, that means we never explored its edge relationships. So we need to add E to the queue. And now, we draw the edge from B to E. And again, that's facilitated by our hash table. We can jump from here to here, and then draw this edge. So. Now what we need to do is process the next neighbor, D. We need to add D. Is D in the hash set? No, D does not have a clone. So add D. And has D been investigated? Have we investigated the edges of D? No, we have not, because we never had an entry for it in the hash table, so add it to the queue. And again, to reinforce this, what is in the queue is not references to the clone mapping, it is references to the original nodes. What lets us hop from the original nodes to this clone mapping is our hash table, our hash table. It's critical to understand that. So now what we do is we're processing on B, we draw that edge from B to D. 
All right, so right now in our breath first search, this is how our mapping stands. We've processed A, we've processed B. The edges from those nodes, from A and B, are completely mapped out. So what we need to do is continue with the search. Who's next? C. So now what we need to do is investigate the edges of C. Is A already in the hash set? Yes, it is. Finished. Don't worry about it. Don't touch it. Don't add it to the queue. It's other neighbor, D. Do we have a reference for it? Yes, we do. We haven't drawn an edge yet though, so we're going to draw an edge to that right now because right now we're working on C. We want all the edges off of C to be expressed. So let's draw the edge. So this is where our clone mapping stands. This is where our original graph stands. That's our original graph. So we finished all of C. Do you see how all of the connections coming off of C are finished? So now we need to process E from the queue. Does E already have a mapping? Yes. Okay, great. Don't create a mapping. Don't create a new node for it in the clone graph. So what we need to do is investigate the edges coming off of E. So we already have this edge from E to B. Now all we need to do is do the edge from E to D. This has not been expressed yet, and we need to express it. And so finally, we finished all of E's edges. There's two edges coming off, we've expressed them here. And now we need to process D, the final node. Okay, and now we notice, wait, D has all of its edges expressed. Do you see these three edges? Three edges. We would be for doing a for loop through all of the adjacents and making sure all of the edges are expressed here, but they're expressed as we can see. So our search has finished. Why is our search finished? Our search is done because our queue is done. We've already searched every single node and at each node, what was our job? Our job was to express all of the edges coming off of a node in the clone graph. And again, this jump is facilitated by the hash table. This is the algorithm. This is how it's done. Highly, highly, highly recommend. Check the code in the description. Once you read the code, it will become very, very clear how this problem is done. This is just a walkthrough for deeper explanation, but I think the code is the best explanation. Now let's look at the time and space complexities for this problem. All right, so here are the time and space complexities. So V is the total amount of vertices we have, and E is the total amount of edges. So the time complexity is going to be the cardinality of the vertices plus the cardinality of the edges. Cardinality just means amount, size, the counts for each of these respective variables. For the space complexity, if we do count the result, we're going to have to return a cloned graph with V vertices. Each of those vertices hold their edges. So our total space is going to be the sum of the vertices and then each of those vertices will hold the edges because we're using an adjacency list to represent our graph. So this is with the result. So without the result, our space complexity is going to be O of V. Why is it that? Well, there's multiple reasons. So the first reason is we could have a worst case where our Q is going to be holding um, some fractional amount of the amount of vertices. So here's an example. So I want you to imagine that this is going to be this graph. We start at this middle node, and what we're going to do is we're going to go from one, and then we're going to process one, and then say, let me add all of one's children. So let's all add all of one's children to this queue. We see that the size of this queue is six. So as we can see, this is a fractional amount of V. It's going to be, it's going to be six sevenths of the cardinality of V, which is seven in this case. So this is one of those worst cases where we store a lot of nodes in the queue and it makes our worst case time complexity upper bounded by V because what would happen is we would just remove that constant factor, that constant fractional component, and we would just have the upper bound on the space be that. So another reason why it would be O of V is because our hash table, we're going to be holding V mappings. We're going to be holding those V um, vertice mappings. So that is another reason it's going to be O of V. So those are two explanations for that space complexity without the result. So that's all for this video. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'm going to do a video like this every day to help engineers prepare for the interview. So that's all for today. And we are done right about now.